Hi guys, it's Justin Mondes Fiction and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about beach reads, books that I think are perfect for the summer, whether they be romances that are set at the beach or thrillers that are super quick to read or a couple of fantasy books that just have a really cool beachy atmosphere. I hope you guys enjoy. All right guys, so before I get into the video, I wanna say I was inspired to do this video by Alexander Rosslyn, who did a similar beach read recommendation video. I will leave it linked down in the description. Also, check out her content. Her editing is amazing. I'm so jealous, I don't know how she does it, but props to her, she's so good. She also has really good content, so highly recommend checking her out. Also, if you're unfamiliar with my channel, I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday, and if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. You can also hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I post new bookish content. You can also check out my Instagram. It is linked down in the description below. With that being said, let's get into this list. All right, guys, so I'm gonna break this video down by categories, so we're gonna start off with romance. And the first two romance books on this list I feel like are constantly talked about, especially in summertime, so I'm gonna go over them super briefly. The first one is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. So this follows Olive Torres, and I believe it's Torres, definitely Olive. And sh her sister is getting married, and unfortunately, her sister and all of the wedding party and guests end up getting very sick off of bad seafood. Luckily, Olive didn't consume any of this, so she's fine, and her sister begs her to take her non-refundable honeymoon. Unfortunately, the best man is also gonna be going because his brother was the groomsman and, or his brother was the groom and suggested he go. Also, Olive and the best man despise each other. I think his name is Ethan. So Olive and Ethan have to go on this honeymoon and deal with each other even though they're like mortal enemies. And it's so good and the vacation atmosphere is just perfect to read in the summer. I really enjoyed this book. I couldn't recommend more. My only uh, issue with the book towards the end, the miscommunication in the third act kind of bugged me. It felt like it didn't need to be there, but I feel like all romance books almost follow that exact formula. So that was my only issue with the book, but overall I did really enjoy it. And next up is my all time favorite romance book. And once again, perfect for the beach, actually has it in the title and that is Beach Read. I love this book. So much it follows uh, January and she is a woman who recently lost her father and upon losing her father she finds out that her father actually had a beach cabin or a beach house that she didn't know about her family didn't know about and it seems like her father might have been having an affair and this just breaks January she's also a writer and because of all of this she has terrible writer's block so she decides to go to this beach house and try to sell some of her dad's things and just find out more about what was going on down there. When she gets down there, she runs into Augustus and he is also a writer and was her college like nemesis. So he has been much more popular as far as writing, his books are selling better, but he writes more like pessimistic, realistic books. Well, January writes more like fluffy romance. So after meeting each other or seeing each other at the seaside town, they decide to do this bet where they're each gonna write in each other's genres. And obviously they start to get to know each other, they develop a relationship and it goes from there. I love this book. It had the perfect amount of like drama and conflict without so much miscommunication. And I love the little beach town and it was just good. It was, this really changed the way I felt about romance. I really enjoyed it. I couldn't recommend this one anymore. And next up is a romance I actually don't hear too much about, and it is a little bit of a more depressing story. However, it has a really cool like sailboat vibe and setting, and that is Float Plan, and this is by Trish Dollar. And this follows a woman who has boyfriend has recently committed suicide. And in order to deal with that, she decides to go on a sailing venture, I think, I forget where she starts, maybe Florida or Puerto Rico, but it turns out she doesn't know how to sail. So this is horribly dangerous. And she's also dealing with all the trauma of losing her boyfriend. So she decides to hire a sailor to kind of help her. And it's Keen, who is this Irishman who is actually uh, missing a leg, but he used to be a very famous sailor. And they develop this relationship and it's really her journey just to heal and understand herself. And like I said, the atmosphere is described very beautifully in this book and the whole sailing thing, I just love it. I, my father 
really enjoys uh, going on boats. My husband's family all go boating. So it sounded really cool. I really enjoyed this book and it's perfect for the summertime. And the next book is actually a YA contemporary and I do not read very many YA contemporaries, but this one was actually pretty good. And it is You Have a Match by Emma Lord. And this follows a girl who ends up taking a DNA test with her best friend just to see if she has any relatives she doesn't know about. And then it turns out she actually has a sister. So after freaking out a little bit, she decides to meet up with her sister and they decide to go to camp together to find out why they don't know about each other, what happened. And it goes from there, but it is a camp setting and I loved summer camp growing up. Um, I went there. It's actually a really funny story. I was too young to go, but my older cousin, who was like my sister, was going and I was so jealous. So we kind of like fudged my age a little bit. So I was able to go and I loved it. I went for, I think 10 or not 10, maybe like eight or nine years and it was awesome. So I really loved all the description of the canoeing and all of the summertime activities and it was good. It was a very fun story. A bit out of the realm of possibility. I think that it was a little bit ridiculous sometimes, but overall, very enjoyable. The next one is a contemporary, and I will read anything this author prints out, but this one in particular is just perfect for the summertime, and you could definitely tell by the cover, and that is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I mean, just look at that cover. Scream summertime but this follows the Riva siblings. So the Riva siblings are children of Mick Riva, who is this famous singer, and they all live in Malibu, and they've all become somewhat famous for surfing, modeling, etc. And every year they host a huge end of the summer party. And this book essentially follows from start to finish the day of that party, and then the aftermath, and it is amazing. I loved all of the siblings. I want more about them. I just feel like this wasn't enough. Like I need more from these characters, but it was such a good time and such a quick read. Once you start, you do not want to put this book down. I think I read this in a day and a half. It's perfect just to lay out on the beach and read. And like I said, they're surfers. So you get all of that surfing atmosphere. It's just a really fun time. All right, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. I have no idea why this next book just reminds me of summer. One, I read it in the summertime. So I'm thinking that might have something to do with it, but also the cover just reminds me of summer for some reason, and that is Boundary Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. I think it's the flames on the cover that just kind of give off that summertime vibe. But I really enjoyed this book. It follows Sansia, who is a thief, and she ends up stealing a very important object. And honestly, I read this book a while ago, and I forget what happens in Boundary Side versus what happens in Shorefall, but the magic system in this is so cool and so hard for me to describe, but it's, you're able to give objects like a sentience like you can scribe things on objects and then they'll follow those rules so like let's say there's a wheel you could scribe a wheel to roll downhill and then it doesn't have to be powered by anything it'll just keep rolling but you can also scribe it to roll uphill and it'll roll uphill and it's just really really cool that was a terrible way of describing this magic system read the book it's actually very similar to um uh, the Bone Shard's Daughter, if you've read that, that magic system, there's a lot of similarities there. But overall, I really enjoyed Foundry Side. I loved the characters in it. You had like a lot of very common tropes that I feel like aren't always done well, but it, they were done phenomenally in Foundry Side, like the mad scientist. And it was just a really cool book that for some reason, also, I think because there's a lot of like grit and it's very like hot in Foundry Side, that also kind of gives with the summer vibe, but it's actually very short for an adult fantasy novel. So definitely check that out. I think it's a pretty good feature read and I really enjoyed it. And the next fantasy book is actually YA Fantasy and that is All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. And really just the setting of this book, especially on the pirate ship, just is perfect for summer. So this follows Amora, who is learning to do this very dangerous soul magic. And there's a bunch of different islands and every island is a different type of magic system, similar to Divergent. I think I said that in another video, the different cities have different magic. So different islands have different magic, but Amora is learning soul magic and she's pretty much gonna be like the chief of this island once she's able to learn it. However, when the demonstration happens for her to prove that she knows how to control this magic, it goes so awry and she has to flee for her life. And she ends up meeting a pirate and this magical pirate ship. And it's so cool, especially there's like a sea monster in this at one point and the fight scenes on the water, just it's so perfect for summer. The descriptions in this are done very well. I loved the writing in this. 
I will say that I haven't read the second book yet. This is a duology, and I do plan on reading the second one. I think it's All the Tides and Fate within the next month, just because I want to read it in the summertime. But yeah, definitely check this one out. And the last three books on this list are all thrillers. I love reading thrillers in the summer just because they're so fast paced. It's a book that I can bring to the beach and get through in one sitting. And some of these are my absolute favorite. So the first one in particular, I adore. It's probably one of my favorite thrillers of all time. And that is The Last Time I Lied. And this is by Riley Sager. And this takes place at a summer camp, perfect. And it follows a girl that when she was younger, she witnessed, or she didn't witness, she woke up and all of her cabin mates had disappeared. And this has really traumatized her and followed her for the rest of her life. She has been seeing these girls that disappeared, like just having a breakdown essentially, and visualizing them when they're not there. So she ends up becoming a painter and painting the girls into the portraits. And that kind of helps her stay in touch with reality until the owner of the summer camp comes forward and asks if she would be willing to come back to the camp. And for some reason, she agrees. And then it goes from there. I loved this book. The ending of this book was insane. But the entire book, you're just so gripped and so captivated, you're gonna be able to read it in one sitting, which once again, makes the perfect beach read. Also, camp setting, perfect. And the next book is Survive the Night, also by Riley Sager. And I don't know why this gives me like summertime feels, but it does. And it follows a girl who unfortunately, after her parents are killed, she begins seeing movies in her head, which really is just whenever she gets too anxious, has too much anxiety, is scared, she kind of resorts to playing a movie in her head. So you can't really believe everything that she sees. And she becomes very stressed out when one of her friends is killed. So she decides to leave college, go back home just to deal with it. And she doesn't drive because her parents were killed in a car accident. So she has to hire a stranger to drive her back home. Well, while driving back home, she starts to realize that there's something that might be up with this stranger, but also she doesn't know if this is reality or if it's a movie in her head and the stranger is actually totally fine. And I loved this book. I read this book so fast. It was so good. And it definitely kind of gave me a summer vibe. Once again, thriller that you can read very quickly. Perfect for the beach. And the last book is actually a book that I read years ago, but I remember really enjoying it and thinking it was perfect for the summertime. I actually think I read this at a beach house and that is Something in the Water by Katherine Stedman. And this is about a woman and her husband who end up going on their honeymoon. And then while scuba diving, they find something in the water. And it is a psychological thriller and it just takes a lot of different turns. I, like I said, I still remember a lot of this book to this day and it's been years since I read it, but I really enjoyed it. I think it got mixed reviews on Goodreads and it was a debut novel, but the vacation in the beginning really gives off those summer vibes. Obviously they're diving. I think there were sharks involved, which like scared the crap out of me, but really good book, definitely recommend. All right guys, those are all the books that I think are perfect for summer. If you guys know any other beach reads or you have any beach reads you want to recommend, please let me know down in the comments below. That being said, I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I will see you all next week. Bye.